honored to be invited to participate in this historic retreat, being the first one of its kind from the time that uh, the Tripartite Negotiating Forum Act was promulgated in 2019. Social dialogue in accordance with uh, the IRO definition includes all types of negotiation, consultation, exchange of information between and among representatives of government, labor, and employers on issues of mutual interest. It usually deals with labor and socio-economic policy issues and more recently increasingly incorporates other themes such as environmental issues. Social dialogue takes on many different forms ranging from bipartite relations between workers and employers' representatives, tripartite processes involving governments as an official party to the dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, the main goal, the way we see it, the main goal of uh, social dialogue is to promote consensus building and democratic involvement among the key stakeholders in the world of work, successful social dialogue structures and processes have the potential to resolve important economic and social issues, encourage good governance, advance social and industrial peace, and most important is the stability and boosting of the economy. Social dialogue is one of the factors that create the environment for decent work for both formal and informal. This is important if you look at um, the structure of our economy now, which is more skewed in the informal. MCOS believes that social dialogue has to be effective in order for the social partners to be able to operationalize their engagements. Preconditions for sound social dialogue include, but are not limited to, strong, independent, and representative employers and workers' organizations with the technical capacity to participate in social dialogue. It also includes the political will trust and commitment to engage in social dialogue, and this is for all parties involved. Also included is a genuine desire on the party of government to consult and involve the social partners in police formulation. Before any police pronouncements, it includes access to adequate information and training so that participants can effectively exercise their rights to participate in the process. Also included is the issue to do with respect for the fundamental rights of freedom of association <coughs> and effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. And last but not least, it includes an enabling environment. As employers, we also believe that government has a critical role in terms of providing the conditions uh, of creating the enabling environment for fruitful social dialogue. Business would like to take this opportunity to applaud government for being committed to ensuring that social dialogue remains the only way in which stakeholders can engage and resolve the socio-economic challenges we are currently facing as a nation. As MCOS, we are of the view that social dialogue, including collective bargaining, is an invaluable mechanism for controlling unrealistic exchange rate developments in the economy, persistent inflationary pressures, informality, the issue of 
where their salaries should be blanket or sectorial, controlling or managing the COVID-19 pandemic and other socio-economic ills. Social dialogue is a strong basis for building the commitment of business and labor to joint action with uh, government to overcome the economic ills that we are currently facing as a mechanism for participation and consensus building in the world of work social dialogue is a key element of decent work and must play a central role in helping us solve our country's social economic problems strengthening social dialogue is the way to go and will not only promote peace and stability, but also spare economic growth and development, particularly with increased participation and consensus building. Hence, there is a need for all of us to support this noble cause. Yes, it's a retreat, but let's come up with um, issues where we say, these are the issues. Let's try and come up with um, uh, an agenda for 2022 for our dialogue. What are these um, agendas? The priority, some of the priorities include uh, the need to look at uh, the vaccinations, how do we keep our workplaces safe? Now with uh, the oncoming of um, the Omicron uh, variant, what are we putting in place for our workplaces? The Omicron also requires us to do constant uh, testing of our employees, <laughs> but the issue of cost cannot be overemphasized. How then do we get um, testing kits at reasonable prices. We also need to look at the operationalization of uh, the TNF by completing the work that we've all done on SOPs and also the need to look at uh, the recruitment of uh, the executive director, especially uh, as soon as we start the new year. We also need to look at issues. If we are really committed to say that we want win-win situations, what are we saying about the deadlock that is on our table to do with uh, minimum wages? The ball is in our court. We are the partners who can actually sit and resolve. On the currency stability, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in a very sad situation where the official rate and the unofficial rate, the gap is <coughs> narrowing by the day. So as social partners, what then are we going to do with a view to stabilize the currency? We need also to focus on uh, the socioeconomic development in line with uh, Vision 2030 the vision of our country. Uh, just to mention a few, include, this includes poverty reduction, employment creation, formalization of this informal economy. On uh, foreign currency, we find ourselves with a situation that uh, we need to actually perhaps review the retention rate. Currently, ladies and gentlemen, the retention is um, 6 is to 40, where you find that um, those in mining or doing exports, <coughs> agriculture as well, they are allowed to retain 60%, the 40% is given in um, the local currency. But the problem now is all their pricing models are in foreign currency. The question then is what do they do with uh, the 40% uh, 
uh, the end of the game is that we find that you know this money will just lose value um, without being put to good production. We are also uh, faced, the ladies and gentlemen, with uh, increased power outages, uh, resulting in us affecting operations in business because they are heavy equipment where you cannot switch on and off. As a result, you end up running these processes with um, generators, uh, and it's not um, a cheap exercise. It's very costly, and once your production cost goes up, the increase then will be pushed to, to, to us in form of prices. Last but not least, uh, we need to conclude consultations on the legislation that is pending before us as uh, tripartite members. We are looking at the Productivity Institute Bill. We are looking at the Occupational Health and Safety Bill. On the Labor Bill, allow me to thank government for the process so far having taken this lab, uh, bill through the uh, cabinet, now the bill is pending before parliament. Uh, we, as business, continue to also interrogate this bill so that at the end of the day, we will have a bill that will promote um, smooth operations in our workplaces. With uh, these few remarks, what remains is for me to wish us all fruitful deliberations. Thank you.